very glad to uh, comment on uh, Alan's uh, paper. And I think I'm in the very uh, privileged to be able to comment on this because I think I've had the experience of uh, actually experiencing what it is like uh, in terms of migration and the implications for agricultural production. And of course, my own research has also been on uh, issues related to migration and uh, the impact on agricultural life within the context of uh, environmental change in the northern part of Ghana. Um, I think it is a relevant topic, which is uh, uh, very much important for policy. And I liked the fact that you looked at different studies from Asia, drawing examples and empirical evidence uh, from different papers. Uh, in terms of um, the impact on the loss of labor, I think um, that is a critical issue because if you look at uh, migration, especially from rural areas to urban centers, mostly the economically active population, they are often involved in this kind of movement. And if you look at agricultural production, especially in rural areas, in sub-Saharan Africa and of course in Central Asia and of course uh, other areas in the Pacific, normally the, the youth or the economically active population, they are mostly involved. And if you look at in terms of migration, um, it's also selective in terms of gender. Mostly the male active population, they tend to move more. And obviously that also has implication for agricultural production and output. Because in most rural areas, uh, in terms of land, normally land is owned or controlled by the male. Uh, and then women get to use the land through marriage or through inheritance to their firstborns and all of that. So I think um, loss of labor is an, uh, is an issue. But um, also something that would have been much more interesting would have to do with uh, uh, the situation of what I termed as uh, missing household heads, where there was a situation where I observed, for example, in my own research work that uh, there, there, there was kind of like m the odd migration of more males, economically active males who tend to be the heads of households. And of course, there was an increasing trend of female migrants who were also kind of like uh, joining the, the bandwagon of traveling out of the, the rural area. So the situation was like children who were not able to work or economically active were left behind with uh, old uh, uh, parents, grandparents, mostly women, because if you look at the population pyramid, we have uh, the males, when you, are, when you are getting to the top ages, then we have males who tend to die off and then leave old grannies around who cannot do any active and then, of course, it will have an impact on their food security. In terms of remittances, of course, remittances also play an important role. Uh, the money that is sent back, normally, why do people move as a coping strategy to look for other uh, ways of getting money or better ways of engaging in employment to create much more income as compared to what we have been gotten from agricultural production? And of course, that a monetary income that comes in as remittances can also be used to further acquire uh, physical capital in terms of farm inputs and also to acquire land in terms of places where land is, uh, is very scarce. But an issue that we tend to also forget about is that, and uh, of course the keynote speaker this morning talked about this issue of social remittances. If you look at Levitt, 1998, she talks about the various types of remittances and of course the motivation to even remit in the first place. And I'm sure as an economist from your paper, I realize that uh, you are more of an economist into modeling. If you look at uh, Solimano's paper in 2003 on uh, leveraging remittances, you look at his try to kind of delve into various reasons why people will even remit in the first place. So if you tend to draw on those areas, you look at the motivation in the first place, are people willing to, to remit? And of course, also try to draw um, what I would say, um, insights for issues related to social remittances, where migrants who are returning tend to bring skills that they might have learned as a result of our migration and they, they eventually bring to kind of like uh, facilitate agricultural production and of course with implications for output as well. Of course, decision making is also a key issue that you raised in your paper. And I think the, with decision making, it may also change. Why, as I cited the example, males as household health, there's that kind of changing rule where women begin to engage in agriculture and they might also even decide as to what crop 
in the first place to, to cultivate and what decision to take in charge of the house in terms of the household because um, uh, the male household head is often missing. Investment in children. You, your paper talked about investment in children and you also raised it in your, uh, your presentation and you talked about education and of course uh, improvement in nutrition. Uh, you talked about um, uh, the situation where uh, there was a, a research there was a research where you talked about an observation where there was an increase in, in weight relative to their height. So, but I didn't quite get, because there was no much insight as to how that played out, because you just kind of like did some reference to that particular research. So I think that is also another critical area that you can consider in your paper. Uh, in terms of productivity gap, obviously, uh, for those who are engaged in non-agriculture, for example, if you are into uh, industry or into mining and all those things, it is obvious that uh, income will obviously be more than uh, the income that will probably, or productivity that will, you will generate from agriculture. Um, what the only um, suggestion I would like to contribute to your paper is that um, there was, uh, I, I get the fact that the focus is much more on agriculture. Of course, that is clear, but I think uh, what I realized was those, I, I, I found it, I read your paper quite a few times, about five times maybe, and uh, uh, it, I didn't see much of uh, what exactly, uh, in terms of agriculture, the paper sought, because you do instances or references to many research, which I think was very good for the purposes of the paper, but it, it's a, it was a bit unclear exactly what uh, the paper sought to uh, 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 bring out. And I realize that you are an economist, as I said earlier on, but uh, as a human geographer or a social scientist, for that matter, I thought it would have, there were, you, in your presentation, you talked about theory or conceptual framework, but that didn't also come out clear. So since you are talking about rural areas, I wanted to suggest that, of course, if you look at the systems theory of migration, uh, specifically uh, Akin Mabogunji's uh, system theory of rural urban migration in Africa, even though it's an old theory to say and it has also drawn criticisms, I think it might guide uh, what you want to do and you should at least draw on some existing theoretical framework or theoretical perspective to give uh, uh, some theoretical underpinning to your findings. And uh, lastly, I think I will just say that uh, the, uh, what interested me or what impressed me most or was kind of like interesting to me in terms of uh, uh, your paper had to do with, should policy be used to promote or restrict migration? Uh, and I think that is also quite important because I saw that uh, you raised issues related to uh, the migration policy in China. I don't know whether KUKO or I don't know whether I'm getting it right, where they tend to restrict migration and all that. But I think um, neither should there, I agree with you, neither should there be a, a policy restricting migration out of uh, rural areas or encouraging or forced migration, as you put it. But um, I think that policy should rather focus on reaping the benefits that come with rural urban migration instead of restricting and trying to minimize the cost. And the cost, obviously, you mentioned them uh, related to the impact on loss of labor and what have you. So I think it is a relevant paper. And uh, as uh, uh, pointed out, if you bring some theoretical flair into it and then trying to be much more specific in terms of the focus of the paper, at least you can carry the reader through and also be able to make an impact in terms of uh, policy direction. Thank you very much.